Hi guys, today I want to talk about some cameras that I've been having a lot of fun with recently. That's the Yashica 44 series. I feel like these are kind of an underappreciated TLR. Uh, they are a 4x4 format TLR instead of the 6x6 format that uh, most of the TLRs are. But I think that's actually kind of cool because it makes them a lot smaller than the normal TLRs are. And uh, they're kind of more pocketable and a little easier to shoot around. But the biggest reason a lot of people don't like these cameras is they shoot 127 film, which is getting pretty hard to find. So today I'm going to show you guys how to convert these cameras to 35mm sprocket holes. That means you'll be able to load regular 35mm film in them and shoot all the way past the sprocket holes for kind of a neat looking uh, image. Now, uh, this conversion will work on any of the Yashica 44 series. Um, you can see these are not the same model I have in my hands. One is a Knobwine 44 and the other is a Crankwine 44. And there are some differences in how you'll shoot them, but this conversion works on any of the cameras in the Yashica 44 series. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to do that, so let's get started. This conversion is really easy. You're basically only going to need a couple of things and it just takes a few minutes. First off, you need a small flat blade screwdriver and you need some electrical tape. And actually, if you're careful with how you shoot the camera, you don't even need the electrical tape. But let me show you what we're working with. We're gonna flip the Yashica 44 over on its back, and I'm gonna show you what the problem is and what we're gonna to do to solve it. So where it normally takes 127 film, if you were to try to put a roll of 35 millimeter in there, you can see it just doesn't fit in the area at all. So we're gonna do a modification here so that fits in there. What we're gonna do, is remove this little roller right here. Now this roller uh, is not a requirement to shoot 127 film or to shoot 35 millimeter film. It shoots fine without it, it's just put in there to be a little bit smoother for the film handling. There's, so there's two little screws here that you're gonna take out. There's one there. And the second one right here. And that'll allow us to just lift up carefully and pull that roller assembly out. So if we put that to the side, see when we take our 35 millimeter film, it now fits perfectly into the film area. You can take it and you can shut the door on it. The door will close and you'll be able to use it. Now, what the electrical tape is for, there's a little red window here um, that is used to tell on the 127 film where you're at winding wise. And if that window is open and you have the 35 millimeter film in here, it's going to expose the film. So what I like to do, our door's a little sticky on this one. What I like to do is take just a little piece of electrical tape and put it over that window. That way there's no chance that you're going to expose your film. I stick it on the inside on the pressure plate. You can stick it on the outside too, but it looks a little funny and it doesn't hurt anything being on the pressure plate. So then what you can do is take your film and I have still have a 127 uh, spool down here. You pull it through and you can either tape it to it or I sometimes will cut a notch in it and just run it inside. And then you can wind it right up onto the 127 spool and you can shoot it just like it were regular uh, 127 film. Yeah, that wasn't too hard now, was it? So there are a couple of things that I'm gonna go over here that are things that you're gonna to have to think about when you're shooting uh, sprocket holes with the Yashica 44s. The first off is since the cameras are not meant to shoot 35 millimeter film, they are a little hard to unload. You're going to have to unload them in a dark room or a dark bag because there is no way to rewind the, the reels on the 35 millimeter film because 127 film goes from reel to reel. The other thing that you're gonna to need to worry about is film spacing. Now, depending on the version of the Yashica 44 you have, that may not be a problem. With the Crankwine 44s, it will advance to the next frame automatically and you don't have to worry about spacing at all. But on the Knobwine 44s, this knob will just keep winding and winding and winding and you'll have no idea where you're at to space your image. So there's a little trick I use for that. There are, you probably can't see them here, but there are two little holes in the knob on the knob winder. And what I will do is when I wind it, I'll make sure that they're vertical. There's one at the top and there's one at the bottom. And it takes almost exactly one turn of the knob to get a single frame uh, advanced in this camera. So I'll just turn it until the knob on the top is now on the bottom. Sorry, the dot on the top is now on the bottom. And then one more time, so the dot is now back on the top. And that'll advance it one frame. So that's a pretty easy way to deal with that. Um, it is a little nice on the knob winders if you like to do double exposures because they're pretty easy for that where the crank winders are a little bit more difficult. But really that's about all you gotta worry about. 
Anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.